Hi there and welcome to another episode of Checking In. I'm Jason Tebb, Chief Executive of OnTheMarket.com and I chat with thousands of agents uh, throughout the year on our regular town halls, but not everyone has a chance to take part. So this series is about shining the light on agents up and down the country, having an opportunity to chat to them about the market and the industry in general, and just to really get a feel for what's happening in the marketplace and talk to them about their business. I'm joined today by Ashley Rolfe. He's Managing Director and Co-Founder of Rolfe East Estate Agents based in West London. Um, Ashley began his career in Chiswick and Acton before uh, starting his business with his co-founder, Simon East, in 1983. 40 years on. Um, is this right? Actually, 40 years on, Ashley is still running the business on a day-to-day basis. Over a third of his team are part of what they call the 10-year club, which is obviously people who've been in the business for a long period of time, which in my view is a great sign of a really strong business culture. So with all that preamble aside, um, Ashley, great to see you. Great to see you too. Thanks for thanks for putting up with me. No problem, no problem at all. And likewise. So let's start, first of all, maybe tell me a little bit about your estate agency business. I've given a brief background to those who are watching, but just tell me about your, your business and, and, and where you operate and the, the main elements of, of your estate agency business. We, we, as, you, as you said, we've, um, we opened in 1983. I was a, I was a young 26-year-old then. Now, uh, now I'm a 66-year-old who just received his first state pension last, last week, which was absolutely marvellous. And Quite amusing oh, to be perfectly honest. Um, I still have the energy, I think, of a thirty-year-old, and in, in my head somewhere, I'm I'm still thirty. It's just when I get to get up, sometimes it uh, it feels like I'm a little bit older. But no, we've uh, we've got offices in West London, Ealing, Acton, Greenford, Northfields, and we basically cover the area from Westfield Shopping Centre out to Heathrow. Um, so it's quite a quite a uh, quite a patch, and it's quite a good part of the world. Um, we like to be involved in. Uh, we like to be involved in local events. We were at a, a Wealdstone football ground game last night, where we're where we're uh, doing some business with some uh, with some uh, local developers and so on and so forth. Um, we were involved with Brentford Football Club, and uh, so we like to be involved with the community as well as just selling houses locally. But uh, we started the business in uh, in eighty three. I had, uh, as you pointed out, I had a business in Chiswick, and or I got my first job in Chiswick. Um, and I always remember the turning point of that when I spoke to my then boss and I said, "Is there any chance of opening another office?" He said, "No, we tried that once; it didn't work." And then um, and then I went to a firm in Acton um, who were a little bit more ambitious, but unfortunately uh, didn't quite have the same. Uh, personable attitude that that uh, that my first company had. So we we opened Rolfies with three basic uh, basic uh, premises. Which one was that people were going to have a career path. Number two that we were going to treat people well. Uh, my parents always brought me up to treat other people the way I wanted to be treated. So that was a good start. Um, and, and number three, and probably most importantly, was that we wanted to we wanted to treat um, vendors and applicants as clients, as a true client experience. So um, we'll, we talk about how we're professionals in our organisation, and we're quite a mature organisation. And I'm just not, not just speaking for myself, but you know we've got a number of people who haven't just been with us for ten years, but they've been twenty years, thirty years with us, and so on and so forth. So there's definitely a career path at Royal Feast, and we definitely treat our our clients as clients, not as numbers or addresses or anything. They are clients, and they have a proper client experience. And we we have one to ones with most of them, and that's that's really our our difference. So um, I hope that that's something of an introduction there, Jamie. Absolutely, and also I think it it highlights something that is relatively unusual in what is a transient industry. And I'll count myself in that. Um, I have you know moved from agency to agency in my estate agency career, and I know that many people do move around and so there's obviously something about the culture or the organizational structure that you have that keeps those those people in and i think therefore that as the experience grows particularly in the locations in the areas in the difference between the houses nearer the train track and the ones on the other side of the road all of those little tiny bits of hyper local knowledge probably become even even more useful to your customers as well, I can imagine. Well, I think that, that you're absolutely right. There's there's no doubt that, that uh, prices can vary from one end of the street to the other. 
Um, and so therefore, obviously, whilst I think that your valuation tools are absolutely excellent, and I have to just say that I think the on the market tools are, are far and away the best. And um, I think that's partly because you actually listen to listen to the agents and react to a, a lot of the things that they believe should happen because they're the guys on the ground. But probably, again, more importantly than that, um, I see that there are probably four very, very important industries in this world. Uh, the first and probably the most important is education. And I was brought up by a teacher, so I would say that. Then, of course, you know, you've got law and order because without education and without law and order, you're not going to get anywhere. Um, uh, and then thirdly is probably, probably healthcare. And then fourthly is going to be where you live. So we impress on the people that work with us that actually you are doing one of the most important jobs in the country. Um, and so therefore, please treat yourself as a professional. Stop speaking about vendors as addresses and we, we address them as clients and we address them properly. And so I think that, um, I think I'm old enough to remember a state agency in the, in the 80s and the great Chris Tarrant laughing about how terrible estate agents were. And I think to a large extent, they probably deserved that title at the time. Mm. But there's been, there's been some good changes and professionalism's, professionalism has slowly improved. And uh, we, we, we think we'd like to uh, put our hands up and say we're happy to sort of head that. Great. Do you think, on that note, do you think that we need... Uh, more regulation in the industry in terms of professional qualification in the industry or do you think that self-regulation as we as it has been for the past you know many decades is 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 the right way to go do you think there needs to be more structural regulation in the business to make sure that uh all customers, not just yours, are treated fairly? Well, Jamie, so that's a very, very interesting and very, very large subject. Um, I think that the, I think the, the, the enemy of all business is probably regulation. Now, that said, we do not want amateurs. We do not want, we do not want um, people who cut corners in our business. And so some sort of, some sort of regulation is, is very important. That said, we are currently drowning under red tape and it's absolutely stifling and killing everybody. We have a, I've got a 26 year old son who heads up our commercial department and he does very, very well. I've got a 22 year old son who works as a negotiator in our Northfields office and he does very, very well. I have to say though, that I bought my first flat at 21 years old and I could not do it now. I yeah. just simply couldn't do it. The regulation and the way that people are treated as absolute sort of idiotic children is really, really sticking in my throat. I also managed, um, managed when we were 26, and because I bought my first flat, I managed to put the equity down for a business development loan to, to start Rolf East. Now, right. you can't do that now. And so, you know, we are basically, I believe in, I believe in people being professional. I be, believe in people being held to professional standards. But I do not believe that we should tell people how to make decisions or what they were allowed to say or what they shouldn't do or so on and so forth. Honestly, Rolfies would not be here if we were regulated then as we are now. And let me tell you, we've, we've, we've employed a vast number of people. We have paid a huge amount of tax. We've paid a huge amount. We've contributed to a huge amount of stamp duty. And none of those things would have happened if we'd been regulated to the degree that we are today. So I hope that you can understand my slightly contradictory answer, which is yes, we need professional standards, but we really do not need the regulation to this to the stifling degree that we have it now. Mm, I share some of your, your views in the sense that I think to some extent we the good agents always come to the to, to the top. You know, those 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 who have a professional attitude, who treat their their customers as clients, as indeed you you've you've said, and um, obviously um, you that's been a core part of your ethos from from day one. I think that you know, in order to be able to be successful in this industry. You can't necessarily succeed or build a substantial business without having that core element of professionalism. And for those who don't and who offer, operate either outside the rules, regulations or, or laws, then they naturally will fall away, as in many other industries. Those who treat it very seriously, who treat it as a profession, 
will be successful and those who don't sadly won't won't be around so i think there is an element of self regulation i want to come back to something that you mentioned earlier around obviously i don't want to i don't want to um hone in too much on the fact that you've been operating for 40 years you certainly don't look it but um what do you think has been the biggest sort of change to the industry in that in that period of time um and has that change been for the good or or for not so good as the case may be well, again, it's uh, it's pros and cons, and it's get it's getting the balance the the balance right. The um the the best thing I think is the uh, is the use of emails. Um, we used to uh, we used to do a mail out um on a Wednesday afternoon, and I remember having having envelopes all over the office and folding paper and sticking them through the franking machine or sticking stamps on, and literally two hundred three hundred. Uh, letters would go out each week from our, from our uh, from, from our organisation. Now, of course, you can just simply send an email and be having a conversation with somebody at the other end and saying, "Right, have you got the details in front of you?" Yes, absolutely, fantastic. But again, as as as, as balance will show us, sometimes sometimes the very best things become the very worst things. So what we've lost by using email is the ability to speak to people, the desire to bring them into the office and to have a face to face conversation with them um, and so on and so forth so I find that some people and generally they're the people who don't last very long with us are the people who hide behind their keyboard and the people that we want to have on board are the people who enjoy speaking to people on the phone enjoy um, the the interaction of listening to how somebody sounds on the phone and trying to really work out what it is that they want because you lose so much by emailing there's a lot to gain and there's a huge amount to lose I couldn't agree more. I think that um, I was always trained when I was a junior trainee negotiator, stop reading all the notes because you'll learn more in 10 seconds on the phone than you will in 10 minutes of, of reading about that applicant before you call them. Yeah. Secondly, it's almost impossible to build rapport, and I mean trusting rapport, yeah. over email. It's not impossible, but it's almost impossible. Whereas over the, a phone call that leads to a face-to-face meeting, all of a sudden, it's very easy to build rapport. So I totally, totally agree with you. Um, well, if, we if, I, to... if, I can, if I can just say the story I tell my, my negotiators is that the house that I live in um, reminded me of the house I used to visit my grandmother in on the South Coast during my summer holidays. Now, I don't care how many notes you read. <laughs> And you've got to have quite an in-depth conversation to really get that type of picture going. But the real truth is that nobody, the, the agent that, that I bought it from, um, a guy called Trevor Kent in Gerald's Cross, he was, uh, he, his, his, his guy there actually took the time to speak to me, to work out what it was that I wanted. And, and uh, the experience I had with them all of those 30 odd years ago was, was, was very, very good. And I'm still in the house now, but, but honestly, you, you're never going to find out on an email that somebody actually thinks, yeah, this is like the house I visited my grandmother in. Spot on. Absolutely right. Um, there's a lot of chatter around uh, in the mainstream media and obviously in the, in the trade press, but also you know, just general conversations is has always been obsessed with property in the UK. But there's a lot of news around that is a bit doom and gloom. Um, certainly on the market, we're not seeing um, some of the, the disastrous models that are being predicted over the course of the next six months. I do think it is tougher for people to get mortgages because it's more expensive, of course, therefore affordability uh, criteria comes in with the cost of living rise. But I don't necessarily see the big seismic shifts that have been reported in the press. Is that where you are as well? What do you think is happening in the market where, where you're operating right now? No, 100%. I mean, we're, we're relatively lucky in so much as we, 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 we operate in a, in a relatively wealthy part of West London. And so therefore, you know, we are largely we there's a there's a bit of suspension which kicks in before we before we we, we're too concerned. That said, um, what would I say? I would say that the market is healthy. I would say that really and truly we need to let people make a few more of their own decisions on on affordability. 
um, yes. and rather than rather than being nanny stated around around you know people telling me what I can or can't afford, it is absolutely ridiculous. So again, I would call for slightly less regulation there. Treat people slightly more as adults who are able to make their own decisions, as opposed to complete idiots that we need to look after. But I would mm -hmm. say I would say that the market is always uh, there is always a property market always a property market um, yeah. and I would say that uh, we have many many overseas clients who actually feel that having uh, having an investment in the London property market is actually a better place than having money in the bank in their own country now of course then we've got the, the, then we've got, we've got uh, money uh, AML laws and so on and so forth, which are absolutely right. We can't just union. We can't just have London as a, some big sort of slush fund. But at the end of the day, um, at the end of the day, it's a, it's a, an observation by them as to how solid the market is. And if you take the long term view, the real truth is whatever you pay today will seem cheap in ten years time. Yeah, exactly. I I, I often used to say to buyers who were concerned about what they were buying i'd say in, in in five or six years you probably won't remember what you paid for it yeah you won't remember what your initial mortgage rate was because it will have changed yeah your circumstances and personal circumstances may have changed and therefore it's all about if it's the right property for you if it ticks most of the boxes not every box because in my opinion there's no such thing as a sort of perfect property yeah. but if it ticks most of the boxes seven out of ten then that's a decision that someone should go for because there's much more in my view, and not everyone shares this, but in my opinion, as you said earlier, this is a long, it's usually a long term asset class. It's not done, uh, people don't buy property just to make money out of it. Um, even buy to let investors don't necessarily look for short term growth, they look for long term capital growth. Um, and I think, therefore, it's a number of other factors, such as can you see yourself living there? Will you enjoy bringing your family up there? Does it have enough space to enjoy bringing your family? Do you need a home office there? And therefore that, that smaller room now fits your requirements. It's those emotional things that are sometimes more important than just purely the financial. Well, Jamie, you, you, you said you, were, you, you spent some time in, in agency. And I think we've all walked into a house where somebody hasn't gone past the front hall and said, I can live here. Yeah, exactly. Exactly right. Exactly. There right. is there um, is definitely an emotional an emotional scenario. And then of course you know. Um, then of course we always say to people, you don't don't try to persuade people to buy houses because there's many excuses. There's a surveyor. There's solicitors. And so therefore, what you have to do is you have to find the house that they're going to want in three months' time, not just the one that they want today. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. And um, linking to that, that, you're obviously speaking to both your clients, your sellers and landlords, but also potential clients of the future. And, yeah. and, and naturally, some people are nervous uh, around, you know, is this the right time to sell? It's the classic question you, you get asked at every dinner party, every pub meeting. It's always, what's the value of my property, even though you might not work in the area that it's there? And also, should it be a good time? Is it a good time to sell or let? What advice would you give to people who are thinking of selling or, or letting, to be fair, at this time? The, the main direction of travel at this moment is that buy-to-let properties, uh, buy properties are going to be more corporate. Mm -hmm. um, the direction of travel is slightly against the accidental or small-time um, individual landlord. A lot of the clients that we're dealing with at the moment who used to build to sell are now building to rent with, uh, with the, um, an A or B EPC rating um, and with, a, with, with all of the things which are going to be needed in the rental market in the future. So my advice to people is that if you're going to be in the buy to, to let market or you're going to continue to be a landlord you have to take these things very very seriously you have to look at the 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 regulation that's going to come in around epcs because you know they're they're, they're they're constantly just going to move it up a level and up a level and up a level and you will be paying for that but yeah. so um my advice to people who are who are in the buy to let market and are currently landlords 
have a look at your have a look very closely at how much you want to be doing it make sure that you're dealing with a, a professional agent that keeps you in front of the regulation that keeps your, keeps all your paperwork up to date because really there are going to be a few people who are going to fall foul of us of fall yeah. foul of us the second the second um, the second part is then people who want to move or feel that it's that they should move generally speaking i would say at this moment in time it's probably quite a good time to upsize or to move on up yes. there are obvious, so i would say that that's that's this market at this moment what i would also say though is of course you know if you're one of the people who 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 have more unfortunate circumstances and we all know what they are and you have to sell then make sure you take a you you involve yourself with a good professional agent you take the right advice from somebody that you feel that you can trust and that they work hard on your on on your behalf to get the best possible price because there are some very very good buyers out there great advice thank you um now, as you know, Ashley, because you are one of our uh, customers, which we very much appreciate, but on the market over the past couple of years, certainly since I've been in the business uh, just over two years now, and we've started to move away from just the core listing part, just the sort of classified ads, into more of an estate agency service, really, really aiming ultimately to provide much more value to our agent customers, maybe even save them time and save them money. How do you think on the market provides value to you as an agent, not just the portal bit, but all of the other products and services too? The thing I like most about the uh, the on the market team and the on the market service is that you're very personable. Uh, so you've selected people very well. Um, and I think that the people that we've been in contact with have always listened to, to concerns of ours. They've listened to suggestions of ours. And as those things have been implemented the service has has in, has increased many fold in my view i really do so i think that that's the being personable being open to suggestions is is definitely uh, helpful to both you and i i think that your valuation tool um is the what it was it, i say i think I, I i'll start off by saying i think it's the best one in the market and it's the one that I encourage our company to use um, as a as a default as a default uh, method. You know, the other portals obviously have their own tools. I personally think that the on the market one is the best, the most comprehensive, and uh, probably the most accurate. So, in terms of working with on the market, I think that it started off being a portal, you know, by agents for agents, and I think that if that if that basic premise continues and, and you continue to, to react to agents in the way that you currently are, I think you'll become the number one very, very quickly. I really do. Well, thank you. It's very kind to, of you, you to say we're continually committed to doing exactly that, which is just listening, listening to our customers. The fact that, you know, I, I spend time doing these exact things. It's so valuable to me. As the, as the chief exec to hear what our customers are saying, listen to them. And many of the products and features that we've launched over the last 18 months in particular have been as a direct result of conversations such as this. So um, thank you. Thanks for your support as always. Um, just before we, we close, it'd be interesting to get your views on, you know, from a, a, a position of strength. You've been around a, a long time in the industry. Your businesses are well established in your locations. What do you think is your biggest strength as an estate agency, but also maybe what do you think in the industry as a whole is the biggest risk to, to, to the industry? Uh, the biggest strength that we've got is that uh, is, is people. Um, and we have a we have I, I couldn't be more proud of my team. We have we have a very, very established, uh, committed, um, knowledgeable personable professional team the biggest challenge that we've got um, in trying to attract new talent when i speak to 22 year olds they don't want to show people property on a saturday on a saturday now uh saturday when i was their age was just a day to get over a hangover quite frankly so uh yes. he so it was a totally different day you'd go in with a list with a with a bunch of keys and and uh and uh, you'd show people property and by lunchtime, you know, you were out sort of watching football or doing whatever you did on a Saturday afternoon. So yeah. the, 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 I think that the biggest challenge is, is, to, 
is to recruit good young talent. Um, and I think that um, I, I, I'm not sure why the world has changed quite in the way that it has. Um, I'm very lucky that my two my two sons have sort of followed me and seen the benefits of being in the in this business. But um, yeah, so so I would say that that our personal biggest strength is 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 our people, and I would say that the biggest challenge moving forward is is attracting new and and good talent into the business. I'm sure when when you were in the business, you know there were there were almost not countless people, but there were there were a number of good entrepreneurial, free thinking people who could organize their diaries, um, organize their diaries, pick up a set of keys, go along, be positive, dress properly, speak properly, and do what they said they were going to do. Um, not sure where we've gone wrong, but that's not what we're experiencing at the moment necessarily, or not in such great numbers. And in fairness to a couple of people that we've taken on recently, there is some good talent out there, but but not as not as much as there once was. I think, I mean, I, I hear this a lot. You're not the only agent uh, to to express concerns over that particular part in terms of talent acquisition and hiring. I think, yeah. um, you know, when I was, you know, I, I haven't been doing it as long as you, but I, I was an agent for 20, just over 20 years. And I think when I first started um, back in very, very early 2000s, um, I was one of six or seven negotiators that started in that business that month. Um, and it just it was a it was a revolving door, and those who hit their targets, who got their uh, conversions from pipeline to exchange completion, they stayed, and they obviously earned well out of it. And those who didn't moved on. I think maybe what's changed, it maybe links to what you were talking about earlier, is that I think sometimes technology, um, which we we think has been one of the single most important factors. Um, in being able to help agents do their job more quicker or more cost effectively. I think sometimes the overuse of technology without the personal element, yeah. which, some, which some younger generations, maybe they're so used to interacting on you know, WhatsApp and email, that that personal interaction with their peers and with other people older than them who are home buyers and home sellers, maybe it doesn't come as naturally as it did to me when I was you know, first moving into the industry or to you. Maybe that is a factor, but I think that it's just about embracing that technology and using it as a tool to be able to power conversations rather than reliance on it, which I think is the important thing. And I think the other thing, just my own personal view, I may be wrong, but I really do think that this is a profession. You know, I've done it for a, a number of years. I'm not necessarily in the agency industry, but I'm very much still in the property sector. And this is a profession. This should be treated with the same level of importance as choosing a doctor, choosing a lawyer, choosing an accountant. You are making a choice to have an expert consult and guide you through the biggest, probably the biggest transaction of your life or multiple transactions in the case of letting. So I genuinely believe that the more people who see it as a profession um, and one that carries with it significant importance, I think that will be better for the industry and then that, that may in turn help to attract uh, the next cohort of people to come and be the negotiators and managers of the future. I agree with you, Jamie. As I said, we're, we are in the top four most important professions in the um, the, the top mo the top four most important professions. It's that simple. Yeah. The way you well, live is much more important than who you're going to sue. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly right. Um, we're coming sadly to the end of time. It's flown by. But uh, Ashley, thank you so much for your time. It's a real pleasure to catch up with you. Um, on these little checking in visits that I have. Um, really good to speak to you and I'm sure we'll catch up again soon. Jamie, thank you for your time. It's been an absolute pleasure. Pleasure. Thanks a lot. Take care. Cheers.